surrounds Elijah and it seems that we have in the Carmelite family within the family tradition this notion that already the school of prophets had a notion of a woman to come the daughter of Carmel the daughter of Sion Carmel a great garden of beauty we had when a student there in the Carmelite place where I was living at Aberystwyth at the end of every day the Flos Carmeli chant which would follow the Salve Regina, a specific element of Carmel. And we have therefore inside that family the tradition that when that cloud was seen by Gehazi at the third attempt to see what was going on, he was sent back all the time by Elijah to see, that he saw then eventually this cloud coming up from the sea, because Carmel looks over present Haifa. And there the prophets had a notion, it would seem, that there was the, the prefiguration of the Shekinah, the coming of glory, but it would be prefigured by this early cloud, Our Lady would be the host of the presence. And this has continued within the world for Our Lady in already appearing in 1251, to St. Simon Stark at Aylesford, still a place of prayer and the shrine of our Blessed Lady and under the hands of the Carmelites, was giving the Carmelite habit, the scapula, that scapula which would come down as a protection from heaven and also a emblem of our Blessed Lady's protection precisely over the individual with a promise accompanying it that of the swift liberation from purgatory, particularly on the Saturday following. Anyway, this came down and continued and was revivified, strangely enough, not that long ago, because time is relative. It was in 1917, therefore less than a century ago, when Our Lady, in the last apparition of Fatima, that of the 13th of October, did come as Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and that was a strong hint. We have many stories of protection, for instance, what would have been lethal accidents with bits of wreckage, but this little scapula coming out safely and the person 
to boot because that person was protected. I mentioned before how Our Lady during the Second World War through the scapula protected in miraculous ways. Now this reading therefore from the Old Testament is very fitting for another reason. As well as collocating us in the garden of the Old Testament where the preparation, the divine pedagogy was taking place for the Incarnation, it also gives us this element of littleness, interiority and silence before the Shekinah, the Presence. Let all mankind be silent before the Lord, for he is awaking and is coming from his holy dwelling. Now it is upon that that I would like to dwell for a few moments. The language of heaven is not noisy. The great miracles of God are quiet ones. Even the resurrection itself was done in the heart of night and few were present. It was an eruption of cosmic energy which still bursts forth every Easter to this day in the Holy Sepulchre. But yet it wasn't an invasion of our privacy. It wasn't an invasion of our will. God is powerfully silent. Now, the power of silence is something that we need to look at. For our society is based on the power of noise. Few know silence. Fewer still relish it. Very few indeed can support it. And that is not just of human origin. Hell is full of noise. And when we are bathed in very loud noise, we are in the vapours of that place. It is one thing to have necessary noise from machines. It is another to put on a noisy machine gratuitously. It is not indifferent either that many neutral, indifferent workplaces now oblige the people working therein to be exposed for all their working day to continuous noise. And if one looks carefully around, one observes that in the most recent period the toleration level has always increased with regard to the amount, the noise level, the content even of what is being pumped at every human being that comes even into the average shop. Now this means that our society is a society now orientated towards the norm of noise and indeed heavy noise. When young I would be in a sense the privileged one to hear what my brother in the bedroom next to me was composing, for he would compose songs in Welsh, both words and music, and eventually record them, make records out of them, because eventually they founded also their own record company, which is still around, Sign Sound. And I had a small drum set. In those days we could create homemade beauty with these simple instruments. My brother was a genuine musician, a very good pianist and a good guitarist and also a good poet. And therefore it was homemade effort. And the drums too had to be done in a way which was rhythmic and in some way poetic, not just noise. And the combination of guitar and music and a brother's good voice was actually something which could heal and one might actually play them, play them in the chapel vestry. That is to say, the nonconformist system has its own system of recreation where things happen not in the chapel itself but in the building adjoining. Homemade amusement. Now, as time went on, that whole field of modern music bit by bit, not straight away, but entered into another mode where one had to have also 
amplified noise and that changes completely the ambience. The Spanish guitar, which my brother had, never electrified, was one thing. The amplification of volume straight away changes the atmosphere. If one now, down the line, recreates in a modern dance, whereas in those days, although modern music was coming in very much into dances, there was still, at least in Wales, a lot of the old dancing taking place, the old Tumpas dance, a barn dance where the steps were called. Actually great fun. But if one goes now to a dance, it is of a different order. For the whole duration of the time in which one will be there, that is in the disco affair, very little communication on the oral level will be possible. It will be based on movement and impulses. Each one, therefore, within his own sphere, is isolation within his own thoughts, because one cannot really entertain the conversation when a very large amount of noise is coming into one system. So that also is a fundamental change as regards recreation time. One is in a different mode. Now, one needs also to be aware of how bit by bit the ethos of dancing and movement and what is now the accepted norm in the discourse of our land is fundamentally different from anything that past generations has known, have known. Why? If one studies and listens and becomes aware, one picks up that actually one cannot really neutrally engage in a night disco anymore and be uncontaminated. It would seem that these places by now are very much under the influence of sinister forces. Let's be clear about this. There is something going on there which is not just human. The enemy of the soul is particularly interested in the soul of the youth and is trying as early as possible to get them. Old Nick knew perfectly well the power that one day music would give him. Already, as things were changing in the late 70s and early 80s, there was the power of the role model. Great stars had huge influence over millions by the lifestyle that they adopted and the messages they gave. If one looks now at the large number of people, young people always, who gravitate towards rock concerts, one sees that it is actually, hugely speaking, a very large proportion of the youth which is in this norm. Now, this norm disfavours to the maximum what precisely the gentleness of our God needs to get through to the human soul, whose structure is always the same in every human being. Old Nick knows it perfectly well. He knows too that he can give power to certain people for a while. He can give them success in this very large theatre of pop music. He can, if they offer him, yes, their services, directly or indirectly, favour their work. And so we now observe also coming in, not any more hidden and obscure borrowings from the infernal realm, but overt advertisement of the same. And if one looks carefully at the explicit references to the dark, the satanic, 
the yes evil, then one observes this is no longer indifferent at all. One cannot go to a place where overtly Satan is proclaimed and enthroned. One cannot go to a pestilent situation and not be in any way infected. By contagion, demons can get in, and once in, they are not in a hurry to leave. The use of what is recognised as satanic symbols, like the old number, going back to the Apocalypse, 666, the number of the beast, is obviously quite deliberate. Okay, if one wants to show publicly who one is serving, we respect that. But we do not have also to give our own allegiance or collusion. The same applies to other events where by just being present we are giving our connivance and our collusion. Churches, marriages even within the family which are outside the will of God, same-sex marriages and so on. By just accepting socially to be there as though it were a normal event, one is giving a message which Satan likes to hear. So let's be clear about this. Much has been written now about what is going on in these places. There is one good author, she is a sister in Germany in a fellowship, that is she would be a Lutheran nun, but she is quite good on these scripturally and also scientifically anal analyzing what is going on. But this particular volume here on the ins and outs of the whole rock world is something which makes the mind boggle. And she has, amongst many things, a, a remark about the way in which many of these who have great success actually end their existence. There's no need to quote them, but we do know that there is a pattern emerging. The end of these stars is often a mighty fall. Does that ring a bell? How you have fallen from heaven, Lucifer. There is a verse somewhere in scripture. Now, I'll just end by what she quotes from a person who got out of the hard, heavy metal music in which she was drowning. And he comes out with this. Satan wanted to kill me. But Jesus Christ gave me a new life, otherwise I'd now be six feet under. And I tell everybody, anyone who gets involved with Satan will end up getting killed by him. For Satan needs you only till he has you completely in his